So we've come out into the middle of Coventry, uh, not far from the old cathedral, because um, we want to compare two cameras, two different uh, manufacturers' cameras this time. Uh, we want to compare a Leica Q2 and a Nikon Z7 II. So I feel like I'm married to good old faithful Nikon, known her for years, know how she works, but now I've got a mistress, a Leica Q2. Cost me a fortune, probably going to get me into trouble, but it's all about the experience. Where's yours? <laughs> this is it. But we're both for using the same settings. Yep. We've got the same megapixels. Yep. So what lens we're all we using? The Leica has a fixed lens, a 28mm f1.7. On the Nikon we've put a 24mm f1.8. Yeah, I mean that's what we're, we're, going to, we're trying to see, is that we're both the same price brackets, I would assume, yeah. with the lens and the bodies. Similar. And similar sizes, to be honest, as well. So we're just going yeah. to see the feel of it and see what we kind of the differences will be. We're not going to be scientifically taking from exactly the same positions. We're going to have the same settings and get a feel for the both of them and then compare and see how we feel afterwards, I guess. Yeah, that's it. Brilliant. Okay, so let's make a start with the comparisons. Um, you can see straight away that the Leica and Nikon have different colour profiles. Um, that might be something that's built in. So if we crop in, and on this occasion, I would say the Leica is a bit sharper, certainly different color tone. So this is an interesting comparison. And it has a lot less curve in the 28 mil. So you can see that's it is bending, but it's, it's okay. On the Nikon, it's quite a lot more but again, that can be corrected in Lightroom. Um, and cropping in. Yeah, they're more or less the same, which is really good for the Nikon at 1.8. So this is where we were comparing the depth of field. Obviously, both of them look really nice. Um, you can't be disappointed with that depth of field. So as you can see, they're both really sharp. Yeah, I'd say the like is a bit sharper and a nicer texture there. And we shot it widest open, focal length. They both look great. So in this example, we were both standing in approximately the same position, uh, looking at a tree in front of uh, the new Coventry Cathedral. Reasonably similar look there, but if we, if we zoom in on a similar part of the tree, um, to me, the Leica is quite a bit more sharper, uh, but also on the Nikon, you can see an amount of chromatic aberration which isn't present um, on the Leica's lens. Here's another example where we were similarly placed photographing the uh, church. Settings are quite different here. I've got the Leica on f8. 1 500th which is my standard settings for street photography but interestingly even without zooming in I think you can see on the Nikon um, amount of chromatic aberration there um, if we try and zoom into similar part then of the, the spire and the trees yeah you can see it's quite significant chromatic aberration there on the Nikon so last night we went out into Coventry City Centre to really test these bodies and lenses of the Nikon and the Leica. On this image, let's have a zoom in to the brighter parts of it. So obviously you can see from this that the white balance is quite a lot different. The Leica is a lot cooler, but yeah, you'll see throughout these comparisons that the Nikon is a lot warmer. Where's that one? There we go. Right, so here's the image corrected ones. As you can see, the Leica is a lot cooler. The pavement there is blue. Okay, so let's zoom in and see the difference here. So this is again 290% crop. So as you can see, not mentioning it. Okay, so what I've done here, I've increased the exposure three to stops uh, for both of them. And as you can see, the Nikon has done a much better job at bringing out the shadows. Okay, so 290%, obviously this is a major crop in. You can see that the plaque on that wall 
it looks about the same sharpness. It's just in the shadows you know, this terrible distortion of pixelization. I'm not sure what it is, but on the Nikon, it doesn't exist. Some kind of aberration there. Okay, so here we went down to one eighth of a second, same settings, compare better, and they're both really nice. I mean, you can see the clouds. This was obviously really dark with some light pollution, but it still manages to see the clouds. I'll say the Nikon's done a better job there. And out of interest, we use the Z6, which is notably better at low light than the Z7. And we also put on a 50mm 1.8, which is one of the sharpest lenses for the Z series. And as you can see, the clarity of this is absolutely sublime. Okay, so here's the Primark building in the square. Yeah, not much yet. And there are some people down here, actually. So let's have a look. So I've cropped in a bit more there with the Nikon. Yeah, you can see the Nikon is a lot sharper in the shadows as we found on the other pictures. Yeah, again, Nikon is much sharper here. You can see the reflections and the details in the dress there, and it's just not there on the Leica. So this is a picture of Lady Godiva statue in the square. We tried to copy exactly the same position and setting. You can see from this 290% crop that the Leica does have better image rendition it's a bit brighter and a bit more contrast, maybe. But obviously, in the, the shadows, it struggles. But again, this is at almost 300%. And out of interest, this is a Z6, which is better at lower light with 50mm. And it's gorgeous. I mean, look at the sharpness of this. It's wow, <laughs> it's incredible. That's some, some netting there. Wow, look at that. You can see all the beams on the individual window. Okay, so for this example, I boosted the shadows to show the difference in noise performance. You can see that the Leica is struggling in the darkest darks, whereas the Nikon looks pretty good from here. Let's go into the clock. So you can see that. Here's a really good example. So you can see the noise problem with the Leica is quite bad there. And you've got the purple fringing on the Nikon, which is really bad there can zoom into the real problem areas <laughs> of the uh, Leica, whereas Nikon it's, well there you go, same settings and the Nikon is doing much better. So I've had it just over a week, as you say I've tried it in daytime and nighttime, I love it, uh, I am a Nikon sort of uh, through and through, I've used Nikon for ages but um, I really do love using the Leica. It is very different. It's very niche, obviously, with the fixed 28mm lens. Um, what I particularly like about it, it's almost like analog versus digital in a way, because you've got the shutter speed dial, you've got the aperture dial on the lens. And for street photography, I've sort of gone back to my days of uh, film cameras a million years ago with zone focusing. Uh, yeah, for street photography, I tend to put it on 1 500th of a second, um, f8 but then manually focus the lens using zone focusing. It's got the, I think they're called the hyperfocal markers. The markers on the actual lens that show you the amount, how much sort of uh, is in focus at a particular F number. So if you put the upper, if you if you've put your aperture on F8 and you put the upper marker against infinity, you know that everything between about sort of five foot and infinity is in focus. So then when you're walking along, you don't have to worry if you're shooting from the hip particularly so you can't see the focus point you don't have to worry about you know is the autofocus working or not because you just know that it's going to be in focus so i love that about it because it's just it's it's just nice to hold nice to use in that way compared to a nikon use how would you um, rate it it's hard to say one is better they're just different it feels it's a metal body beautifully made hardly any buttons on it no ports on it it's just a nice camera to use when you're out and about you know it's compact um, there are plenty of other compact cameras out there i mean the z50 we're filming on is just as probably yeah. smaller actually they don't say Leica or have a red dot do they although <laughs> ironically mine hasn't got a red dot because it's the special edition one i mean we're comparing it to my z7 which isn't that much bigger than the really in the hand 
I'm going out to do something, I'm sitting there thinking, what do I need to take? I probably need to take two bodies, two different lenses. You just pick the camera up and go. You're not worrying about what lens am I going to put on. You just pick it up and go. And there is a simplicity about so that. So really, it's like going back to a purist photographer. I think so, yeah. Where you just go out, you don't have many options because there isn't many options. No. The actual art of street photography, let's say, going around with manual controls, it does bring you closer to the art of photography, yeah. I think. And you're enjoying the process of taking the photograph. So from our tests, the low light is not very good at all. It's okay if you don't open up, if you don't want to open up the shadow, open up the shadow. As soon as you start to do that, there is loads, as you can see from the comparisons, there's loads of noise in there. Yeah, I think even in the daytime, I think it actually had more detail. If you go in more than 200%, yeah, okay, it starts to look a bit different. It's got more detail, but it was noisier. But the noise in daytime, when you're really cropping in, yeah, it, it was sort of okay. The Z7, for me, you've got, it's more or less the same size. It's a yeah. nice, cam great camera to use on yeah. mirrorless cameras. You can, loads of good lenses to use. You've got really good video capabilities too. I, what's... It, it produces beautiful files out of the camera that look lovely Very different from the Z7, so. it's got a slightly like different Z7 look Z7 yeah but I, I yeah i'm not going to say it's uh, <laughs> it's it's the experience of using it is really nice you know you're, you're, you've got a Leica. it's it's the history and the prestige and the art of using it would be my for once i haven't had a shred of buyer's remorse where i'm thinking oh my god i just shed out a whole load of money i wish i hadn't i, I don't regret it at all for me if i wanted a street photographer i'll get something like the z50 so it's small and powerful if i wanted something better quality i'll get the z6 or z7 yeah so many more options and i just i for me it'd be hard to justify and i can see that when i'm out and about in town like we are today that would be sort of the first camera i put in my bag now because i'm going to go out and and enjoy the experience, the whole manual feel of setting the aperture on the lens, the, the dial for the shutter speed. For me, I probably wouldn't like the user experience of it. No, you probably wouldn't. And you're <laughs> not I, going to borrow it now after you said that. Well, I hope this has been helpful. It's been quite an interesting comparison. We've enjoyed it, yeah. Some ways are very similar, other ways are very different. But I hope this has been quite informative. Yeah.